The Boy Who Lived Before you read Have you ever heard of a boy named Harry who lived in a cupboard under the stairs? This is the story of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Have you ever felt like you don't belong where you live? Think about it. Now let's get started. Big houses lined a street called Privet Drive. All the houses looked the same, except for number four. Number four was different. It was very tidy, not a single speck of dirt anywhere. The people who lived there liked things to be normal, very normal. Mr. and Mrs. Dudley lived at number four. They had a son named Dudley, who was turning three very soon. They were excited for a big birthday party, with many cakes and presents. One stormy night, a strange thing happened. A giant man named Hagrid arrived on their doorstep with a tiny, wrinkled baby boy. He was wrapped in a thin blanket, with a lightning-shaped scar on his forehead. Next to him was a letter. The letter explained that the baby's name was Harry, and his parents had died in a car crash. Mr. Desley, very grumpy because he didn't like surprises was particularly against anything strange in his normal life. He wasn't thrilled about taking Harry in. Mrs. Dusley, kind but scared, finally agreed. They decided to raise him, not as their own son, but in a small cupboard under the stairs, hoping no one would ever know about the strange way he arrived. Harry lived a life unlike any other child. He didn't have a room with toys and posters on the walls. Harry's home was a tiny cupboard under the stairs on Privet Drive. It was a cramped space, just big enough for a thin mattress, a dusty old pillow, and a few of his meager belongings. The Desleys lived in the house above. Uncle Vernon, a large, grumpy man with a booming voice, worked at a drill factory. Aunt Petunia, thin and blonde, was obsessed with keeping things neat. Their son, Dudley, a spoiled boy with a round face and piggy eyes, had a room overflowing with toys. Years passed, and Harry grew up with Dudley. He lived a life of chores and constant reminders that he wasn't wanted. He was blamed for everything that went wrong from Dudley's broken toys to Uncle Vernon's bad days at work. He received hand-me-down clothes that were too big or too small, and his only solace was a worn teddy bear missing an eye. Dudley liked to tease him about his messy hair and strange things that sometimes happened around him. He often bullied him for being different. Harry didn't understand why these things happened but the Desleys never explained anything. Despite his unhappy childhood, Harry noticed strange things happening around him. Sometimes, the glasses he wasn't allowed to wear would suddenly appear on his nose. Other times, weird things happened at school, like turning his teacher's wig blue during a fit of anger. He never understood why these things occurred, and the Desleys never explained a thing. One day, Harry received a strange letter addressed to him. The Desleys tried to hide it, but letters kept coming. Then on Harry's eleventh birthday, everything changed. Hagrid, a giant man reappeared through the door, bringing news that turned Harry's world upside down. Hagrid revealed that Harry's parents were wizards, and he was a wizard too. Harry couldn't believe it. A wizard? But he lived with perfectly normal people. Hagrid explained that his parents had been very important wizards, and a terrible man named Voldemort had tried to kill Harry and his parents when he was a baby. But something went wrong. Voldemort couldn't kill Harry, leaving only a lightning-shaped scar on his forehead. Hagrid took Harry to a hidden place called Diagon Alley 
where he bought all sorts of amazing things, a wand to cast spells, books about magic, and even an owl named Hedwig. Harry learned that he was famous in the wizarding world for surviving Voldemort's attack. He also learned about his parents' bravery, his own hidden magical abilities, and a school called Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. For the first time in his life, Harry felt a flicker of hope. Hogwarts wasn't just a school, it was a place where he could belong, a place where he could learn about magic and finally understand why he was different. Leaving the cupboard under the stairs and the Dursleys' neglect behind. The day arrived for Harry to go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Harry boarded the Hogwarts Express, embarking on a journey that would change his life forever. In a train filled with other witches and wizards. Harry had never felt so excited and scared at the same time. He was finally going to a place where he belonged, a place where magic was real. He met Ron, a friendly boy with a big family, and Hermione, a clever girl who loved books. They became his best friends. Hogwarts was a magical castle with moving stairs, talking portraits, and delicious feasts. It was filled with fascinating people and creatures. There was Hagrid, the giant schoolkeeper with a gentle heart and immense knowledge of magical creatures. He became a great friend and mentor to Harry. Harry learned to fly on a broomstick make potions, and even speak to snakes. He also made enemies with Draco Malfoy, a mean boy from a rich family. Professor Dumbledore, the wise and powerful headmaster of Hogwarts, kept a watchful eye on Harry. With his long beard and twinkling blue eyes, he commanded respect and offered wise advice. One day, Harry, Ron, and Hermione discovered a secret, someone was trying to steal the Philosopher's Stone, a powerful object hidden at Hogwarts. Legend said it could grant immortality, meaning you could never die. The friends decided to stop the thief. They faced dangerous challenges, Harry encountered a variety of magical creatures. He faced a grumpy three-headed dog named Fluffy guarding a hidden trapdoor, outsmarted a life-size chessboard with living pieces, and even encountered Peeves, a mischievous poltergeist who loved causing trouble all through the year. Finally, they reached the room with the stone. There, Harry faced Professor Quirrell, one of Harry's teachers, who was possessed by Voldemort. Voldemort wanted the stone to regain his power and come back to life. A battle followed. Harry couldn't let Voldemort get the stone. But Quirrell couldn't touch Harry either, something protected him. In the end, Quirrell is burned by Harry's touch and Voldemort flees. The stone was safe. Harry recovered in the hospital wing, a hero. He learned that his mother's love protected him from Voldemort. He might have lived with the Desleys, but Harry finally felt like he belonged at Hogwarts, a place filled with magic and friends. One important event in Hogwarts was the sorting ceremony. A magical hat placed each new student in one of four houses, Gryffindor, known for bravery, Ravenclaw, for intelligence, Hufflepuff for loyalty, and Slytherin, for ambition, sometimes at any cost. Harry, with his courage and determination, was placed in Gryffindor alongside Ron and Hermione. While the mystery of the Philosopher's Stone was solved, there were whispers of Voldemort's potential return, leaving a sense of unease. As summer arrived and Harry returned to the Desleys, he knew his life wouldn't be normal again. He had a place at Hogwarts, friends by his side, and a destiny waiting to be unfolded. What do you think will be new adventures in his second year? Who else would he meet?
Join Harry on his next magical journey to discover more. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section, and I will reply. I hope you enjoyed this story. Like and subscribe to Go English Stories. See you in my next video.